Hello, everyone. I just saw a, a video of somebody 3D printing this interesting looking chair. Uh, it's called the fortune chair, and it's kind of looking like a fortune cookie that's flipped over and opened up a bit. So I wanted to see if I could model that fairly easily because the person in the video had used a number of different 3D modelers. And uh, I can show you kind of a primitive of how to make this thing in only a few lines of code using open SCAD. So I've got open SCAD here. And as you can see, we're going to start off by just creating some variables. One is going to be the size of the chair. The second variable is going to be the thickness uh, because we're going to have to make um, a difference to, and uh, the difference will be that thickness to create some solid shape. Now that middle part of the chair that kind of curves from the seat down to the base is actually what looks like the inside of a torus. Um, so we're going to make a torus. We're going to make two circles. One is going to be the outer diameter, the size S. The second one will be the outer diameter minus the thickness. So you'll essentially get a ring like you see there. Now an open S CAD in order to make a torus, uh, you've got to push that out of the origin there so that it's uh, off of the Z axis there. And now you do a rotate extrude. I'll do a 360 just to show you what the complete torus looks like. And there you have it. So it took that circle and it is a hollow torus. If I didn't do the difference, you'd have a solid torus. Now I'm changing, I'm creating a, uh, the, the FN variable there, face number. I'm uh, increasing that to 50 so it looks smoother. Now... That section that we have that looks kind of like the the part of the chair that goes from the top to the bottom is actually a portion of this torus. So to get grab that portion, we're going to create a cylinder and we're going to find the intersection that that cylinder makes with the torus that gives us that shape. So I'm just going to indent it here a little bit. And we've got now, okay, that's if we just take the middle of the torus, okay? And it kind of looks like that, but not quite. Um, it's a portion of that. And we're gonna, you're gonna see, I'm just gonna move the cylinder around and rotate it and try different things so you could see what they look like. And you can get some interesting shapes just getting portions of a torus, which you could use potentially to model other things. So here's what happens when we rotate the cylinder. We get this weird kind of binocular shape and uh, you can move that cylinder around and uh, you know make it look different so that's if you ever want something that looks like that there's another one um, I rotate the other way we're just back to the same thing because it's just the cylinder rotated on its own axis um, on its long axis but if you remember the chair wasn't the complete thing it was a it used about 180 degrees of that spindle there that you see so I'm going to just change the rotate extrude to 180 and then you'll see now that kind of looks more like that middle part of the chair. Um, and you can see that, you know, that where I'm showing you there, the middle part. It's just that it, it's, I'm showing it to you sideways here. It's rotated. So now we have to create the top and bottom of the seat. And so to do that, I'm going to make, uh, they're, they're kind of spherical sections. So we're going to make a sphere on the top and bottom. So bear with me first, the outer sphere, and then the inner sphere is going to be basically just the same size, just minus the thickness, and we're gonna make a difference. So again, it's going to be a hollow sphere. We need it to be hollow, because we're going to cut it away later, and we need it to have a thickness. So that's the first ball. Now you can't see that it's hollow, because the outer sphere obstructs the view. But believe me, the ball is hollow. We're going to slide it over and you can see it's kind of joining up with that edge of the torus there um, on one side. And we're going to copy the same thing again and just move it the other way right there. So those two sections essentially are the, um, the top and bottom of the chair. But we don't want the whole sphere. We only want the portion at the back of the chair. So we're going to make a cube here and slide it over to the back of the chair. And we're going to select the intersection of that cube with those spheres. So it only keeps the back of the chair. Just have to move it back a little more. 
Okay, so where that box, it's a little bit too high, I'm going to have to lower it as well. Um, we can do that either by centering the cube or just moving it down. Okay, whoops, down by, there we go. So now we have that square is overlapping the portion, and I have to union that in order to do the difference properly, or the, I, sorry, the intersection with the cube because otherwise it won't intersect properly. So now we intersect that cube with the union of the two balls, the spheres. And then when we run it, I'm just indenting it. When we run it, it now has grabbed that back portion. So there is essentially the chair in essence. Now, obviously the real chair has a few more things going on. For example, it's wider and it's also the top is a little different than the bottom. And the uh, sort of the edges of the chair that f come forward flare out. They're not straight like that. So we're going to have to transform this thing a little more, either in OpenSCAD or other software. I just wanted to show you how in only a few lines of code, you can essentially model exactly the shape um, to some approximation. Now, obviously, the the secret to this chair is that it does have some different proportions um, than the simple geometric figure. Like that one looks pretty even top and bottom, but the side lips do widen out, right? The sides of the chair widen out. I'm not going to wait for that to render. It's going to take forever. Um, we're going to also apply a few other features to this chair in, um, in a moment. For example, we're going to make the edges a little bit more rounded because right now, the what's rendering has very straight edges and you'll notice these are nice and round nice and rounded edges so that's uh see you can see some other people have tried to model it and uh, they look pretty good they look pretty good you can almost make like a bathtub shape and then fold it in half at the bottom so we're going to jump to the next section where which is where i'm going to show you how it looks uh, when you start rounding off the edges and then eventually I'll put together a video once I figure out how to transform the shape a bit in OpenSCAD and we'll see if we can transform it and widen it out and also make the, um, the edge of the chair f uh, flare out a little bit. Okay, so we're back to the uh, chair and I've cleaned up the code a bit and that's essentially the entire chair right there. Top part makes the spherical seat and base, and the bottom part of the code there makes the toroid, which makes the front of the chair. Now what you're going to see me do is make the, the edges round. So we're first making a circle that you can see there just appeared, and we're going to extrude it around, and uh, we only need 180 degrees. So we're going to create this sort of uh, 180 degree section. Now, for some reason, it didn't do it. I don't know what I, oh, I have to put angle. Nope, that didn't do it either. Oh, I know what it is. So it won't extrude a circle that's off of the X, Y plane. Um, so I, I actually can't translate it up above the X, Y plane. And what I've done here is I've translated it S. Um, I've translated S along the Z axis. So we're, let's go back and put it back at the zero. There we go. That's better. All right. So it has to be in the X, Y plane. So I can extrude it S on over on the X axis, and then it'll, it'll extrude it. It'll rotate extrude around the Z. So there it is. Now I'm going to translate that over so that it overlaps one of the edges. It's already shaped like one of the sides. So you can see there now it's a little bit wider than it needs to be. So I should make it half the thickness because remember, that's the radius I've made. I need half of that radius. There we go. And it's now off of the end. So I got to move it by also about half of the thickness. So I'm going to do that there. Now it's lining up with the edge. And why am I using all these variables is because I, I want to be able to change the size and thickness later, like I'm doing there. And it not, I don't have to retype anything. It's just automatically scaling it, you see? So that's lined up nicely. I have to make a copy of this thing now and basically do the other side. 
To do that, I'm going to move it to the other direction and we want to subtract. So it's overlaying now and now we've got the two sides. And then we've got to do the top and bottom of the chair. Now, ultimately, when you're rendering this thing, you're going to probably want to flatten the bottom anyway. So you might do a difference with something to put or put legs on the bottom of the chair so it's not rounded on the bottom. But the rest of the chair, you want it to be rounded. So here's another, um, another rounded piece, but we're going to have to rotate it to match the sides. I just don't know which way to rotate it. I'm going to have to play around. So that's obviously not right. Okay, we got to flip it another direction. Let's try a few different rotations here. Okay, that's not right either. Um, um, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, hold on. Where to go? Nope, that's not good. One more. Okay, it's almost there. There we go. Okay. Now, the only problem with that one is that it is too big. It's actually wider than that section of the torus. So we're going to, first I moved it up a little bit. It lines up, but it's too big a an actual uh, circle. So we have to make it slightly smaller. So we go down to that uh, translation and we we need to translate it for less from the center. So let's try by T, no, that's too much. Half of the thickness, there we go. Now it lines up, okay? And then the other side of the chair will essentially just have the same round bend piece, just moved the other direction. So I'll copy paste that and we'll just have to translate it, but a different direction. Let's try negative S and see if that works. Yep, it just goes the other option, uh, other uh, way. So that's it. That is now the same uh, chair in only a few lines of code there. And you can see if I change the thickness to one, two, three, whatever the thickness is, will always um, you know, match up the rounded edges. So you can make it nice and round at the top and bottom. Um, that's a really weird looking thing. Interesting shape, but uh, might be useful for, for something. And there we go back to the sort of prototype chair, which needs to be transformed still because this is not exactly the same sh shape, shape as the fortune chair. We need to tweak this and um, it has to be um, distorted in a few spots, widened up at the front and the top and bottom have to be changed. Okay, so I've cleaned up the code a bit. Um, you can see we have a lot of repetitions on the bottom there where we have the rounded edges. Uh, a lot of this code can just be um, made a lot simpler. You'll notice that that rotate extrude thing is just the same code repeated many times. The only difference is that we've translated it a different amount depending on whether it's the top, bottom, or the sides. So I'm just going to make that variable i, and we can just uh, uh, clean up the code here by just giving it that one function name, the module rounded edges, and passing to it the variable we want to change, which is just i. And that's exactly the same thing there, the rounded edges s, and we can do the same thing for the other two, um, just giving it, instead of s, we do s minus... Um, what was it at the bottom there? S minus two over two at uh, T over two. So we'll just rounded edges. Yep. Yeah. S minus T over two. Okay. We still need, we still want to rotate because uh, those are on the sides. And then here's another one. I mean, you could just do a mirror as well, but, and I'm sure I could clean up the code even more than this. Honestly, this is uh, there's way more places to 
to make it smaller. Like at the top, the spheres that I have that I'm doing differences on, um, I can just make, also do, um, you know, modules for that to make hollow balls and hollow uh, toroid. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head up to the top and uh, optimize the code for the spheres. Instead of doing differences of spheres there on two lines and translating them, I'm just going to make a module that makes a ball that translates it by the position uh, shown there as a variable position along the X. So I can just copy that translate uh, difference of spheres and just make one copy of it there and give it a position. And then when I go down to the bottom, I can just optimize the code there. Instead of typing that line, I can just make a ball and give it a position of minus S and plus S. And that'll save a couple lines as well. Um, obviously, the more modules and things you make, sometimes it obfuscates the code, makes it more confusing to understand. Uh, but I wanted to show you here that that what looks like a quite complex shape that you see there, I've managed to generate all on this one page of code, which you can see right there. And uh, the code is working. And what I'm going to do is add a multi-matrix at some point or other um, transformation and distortion code and see if I can make this thing look more like the actual fortune chair by stretching it and twisting it and, um, t you know, tapering it a little bit more and widening it. There's basically the fortune chair and, you know, one page of code. Not even. Thanks for watching. And catch you next time. Bye for now.